Hey, it's Greg here with MaritimeGardening.com and it's that music I use when I'm building stuff. And today I'm going to show you how I built these terraced uh, beds. Uh, that's the simplest term I can use for these. Just uh, little log gardens that I put on a south facing slope uh, outside of my garden enclosure. I'm going to grow pumpkins here. And the slope of this uh, hill is about uh, what you'd call a 612 pitch, I guess. Uh, six high by 12 long sort of thing. <laughs> So uh, as a rise over run. So uh, what have I done here? I've, I've made a little uh, box. I just used some some dead uh, dead trees, logs. You can use whatever you got, but it, uh, I made a little box. It's about 24 inches by 24 inches. I think that's about the amount of space a, uh, a pumpkin needs. I put some, uh, I dug, a, dug out the soil underneath. It's just rocks and clay and put some rotten logs in there. And then I put, uh, if you'll see those buckets there, I put half of one of those, a horse manure in and uh, stomped it down with my foot a bit. And here I am just putting some uh, nice uh, topsoil. Is this is compost uh, on top. And this is the general approach I use for the three beds. I didn't, uh, this, this one here was nailed together, but the other ones I put together just using uh, pegs on the outside. If you put pegs on the outside and the soil holds the inside together. Uh, uh, so that's what I did with those uh, and now I think I'm putting some this is seaweed uh, I believe so uh, I love putting a, I'm putting a bit of, oh this is leaves here I'm putting a bit of leaves down and I think I put seaweed over top of the leaves if I recall uh, you don't need seaweed for this uh, I've just got it and I needed to use it somewhere and uh, any plant that you want to give a real strong boost to uh, if you've got a, an easy to get at source of seaweed, uh, I would use it. I would never go and buy seaweed products from a garden center. You are, you are getting, <laughs> I'm sure there's some people that swear by it, but I would never buy that. <laughs> I use seaweed in all my gardens, but I would never buy it, <laughs> right? Uh, uh, but it, it is like, it really seems to heat the soil up. And uh, when you're putting like just, this is like dead seaweed off the beach. Uh, anyway, so I'm mulching the soil here just to, uh, you know, keep it nice and moist. I'm going to water this once and then uh, I'm going to leave it for uh, that one. One watering is all this is going to need to get it to germinate. Uh, at least that's been my experience. Uh, so uh, I got three beds here. I might make another one. I don't know. Uh, uh, the one to the left of where I'm standing, which would be your right, has one of those giant Atlantic dill pumpkins, if you're aware of that variety. Uh, I got a, there's a guy I buy eggs from that's sort of obsessed with growing really big pumpkins. So I got a couple seeds off him. I said, oh, I'll give it a try. Let's see if you can grow the biggest pumpkin. Uh, the real advantage of growing a pumpkin this way is that it can, uh, you know, you don't need a, a huge garden bed for pumpkin. That's the seaweed I'm putting on there. The smell was just unbelievable. This seaweed really stinks when it sits in a bucket. Just stinks. Um, but of course, as, as with most uh, composting, uh, activities, uh, the stink is good, <laughs> right? So, uh, uh, anyway, yeah, like if you got one pumpkin growing in a, it's got its own really good rich soil in a 24 inch by 24 inch type uh, setup, uh, that would be 60 centimeters by 60 centimeters for people to do metric. Uh, and then you can just let the vines sprawl all over. I mean, the surrounding area around this bed is just weeds. It's just weeds and rocks and clay and not very good soil. It doesn't matter. The pumpkin needs place to needs space to roam. It's a nice sunny south facing slope, so this pumpkin will be very happy. So here I am. I'm just moving the mulch back from the soil. I actually should have just put the dome down first. This is the I did a video, uh, I guess in February when these arrived. Uh, it's called a, a cloche. C l o c h e. It's a French word. Um, so there, I guess, in a long time ago in in France, they used like uh, glass bells in that plastic, right, um, to uh, extend the season, or it, it, more importantly, to to get the season started a little bit earlier. So these would have been like the earliest kinds of greenhouses or cold frames or whatever. It's a, they're really handy because they just fit together, and uh, easy to put away. It'll last a long time because you only have them outside for maybe a month a year, right? I mean, this pumpkin's going to get going. I'll leave the cloche on there until the pumpkin's too big for it. Then I'll take it off. And, you know, we're still, what is it? It's, it's uh, I, I made this video on June 8th, I think. And last year we had frost, late June last year. So I don't think we're past the risk of frost. 
uh, hopefully we are, but you just never know around here. It's such, uh, such variable conditions. Anyway, the variety of pumpkin I'm growing here is called uh, Early Giant. It's, uh, I believe it's a decorative pumpkin. It's just supposed to be big and orange, the sort of thing you'd put on your front porch uh, for Halloween, which is what something North Americans do. I don't know if uh, people do that in any other part of the world. It doesn't seem to make any sense to me to grow something for the sake of leaving it on your porch and then throwing it away. But anyway, that is the tradition here. Uh, I don't grow a lot of decorative pumpkins, but I thought I'd do a couple this year and it'd be a fun experiment just to see uh, how well this garden works. So I mean in terms of sowing for pumpkins I like to put them about an inch deep uh, in nice healthy soil. Um, when you're sowing seeds of any kind really for those people that don't know know this uh, it's really good to to pat the soil down. I, I don't know if I do it here but uh, uh, that's the general uh, approach. You know, you put the seed about an inch for a pumpkin seed, a big seed like this, you put it about an inch deep. Uh, I'm throwing a little bit of uh, extra compost on top there, but the, the depth, the planting depth will be about an inch deep. Then you just sort of pat it down. And uh, I don't do it in this video, but then you should water it. <laughs> water it, then put the cloche on. Uh, as soon as I finished filming this, I took it all apart and watered it, put the cloche back on. But anyway, just for the sake of uh, continuity, just assume I just watered it there because that's uh, what I did for all. I, I've got three of these beds. Um, the thing's got a vent on top that you can open or close. I just close it that way all the water, the moist, you know, like it'll get hot and the water will cause condensation but then it falls back down. You can see me sort of talking here and that's because I filmed this video twice and the whole point was to have me talking out in the garden while I was doing it. Uh, but the first time I didn't have my microphone on properly with the camera and all you could hear was wind. And the second time my next door neighbor started mowing his lawn and all you could really hear is a lawn mower. <laughs> It's like this. It's like fate did not want this video made, um, and I, I just didn't have it in me to film it again. Uh, so uh, I decided to do this vi voiceover to salvage the footage. But the whole thing's been done in real time. So I mean, the hard part is getting the uh, when you've got a slope like this is is uh, getting all the materials uh, up the hill <laughs> in a position where you can garden. Because you can't use a wheelbarrow, right? You gotta just pick your, put everything in a bucket and carry it up there. Uh, but it's a one-time deal. Right next year, all you gotta do is plant stuff. But anyway, if you've got a slope like this, and uh, you know maybe you don't have the energy or the wherewithal to turn it into a big elaborate garden, you can just make some little beds like this and plant something in there that'll sprawl all over the place, right? Pumpkins need a lot of space, but in terms of soil, good growing soil, the roots don't need a whole lot of space, maybe just 24 inches by 24 inches, 60 centimeters by 60 centimeters. That should be enough for the plant to be really healthy. And, and I mean, the, the roots can go underneath the uh, logs and and find all kinds of space down there. So, I mean, I'm sure these plants will do really well and they got lots of room to roam and it's south facing, so it'll be nice and hot. All the conditions um, pumpkin lo pumpkins love. So uh, I said I'd do a video on how to put these together. I <laughs> I tried twice and failed. Hopefully this third attempt is uh, is adequate enough to, to get a sense of how I put these together. So I hope you found that interesting. And if you did, please like, share, subscribe, check out my podcast, MaritimeGardening.com. And until next time, get out there, get at it, and have fun in your garden. Thanks for watching.